Hello everyone, I'm Rodney for 3GameMan.com and today I'm having a look at the Thikas N5810 5 Bay Linux NAS. Now to give you a bit of an overview, this comes with an Intel quad-core CPU, 4 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, and as well the capacity is up to 40 terabytes. There's two LAN ports on this, so two gigabit connections are possible. It's bundled with antivirus software. You can have all kinds of RAID setups, redundancies, and of course, up to five drives. So let's dive right into the review. It comes in this great looking, very informative box that has plenty of features, specifications, and pictures of the product on it. Plus, there's a carry handle at the top. The packaging is great. They include a power cord unit itself which comes in a plastic bag. And in this plastic bag, they include a Category 5E network cable, a warranty card information on hard drive compatibility, a quick installation guide and product notes, plus keys and screws for installing the drives, an installation CD, and the Cronus True Image software. Now let me go through some of the hardware specifications. It comes with the Intel Celeron J1900 quad core CPU, four gigabytes of DDR3 memory. You can expand that though up to eight Eight gigabytes if need be. It comes with two network ports so you can do two gigabit connections with this. Now I will be taking a closer look at this but it comes with three USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports. There's a display on the front and below the display there's four buttons, enter, escape, up and down. At the back there's an HDMI port, there's also a line out for the audio. You can fit five serial ATA drives inside of this. There's a 200 watt internal power supply, also has a thermal sensor on the processor for monitoring temperature. The system clock is backed up by a battery, also if you lose power it will power back on. There's also all kinds of alarms that you can set up. Now it measures in at 230 by 190 by 240 millimeters and weighs 5.09 kilograms. Now as for software functionality, I'm really going to fly through this pretty darn quickly, but I'm going to put on the screen the details about each particular category. As for RAID, you can do RAID 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, as well as JBOD, all kinds of disk support, as well as network support, like for example, TCP IP, Apple Talk, SMB, and so on. System status, you can do, you know, CPU monitoring, memory, network utilization, and all that kind of stuff. As for the OS support, well, it pretty much supports, you know, any operating system. Windows XP, Server, Unix, Linux, Mac, OS X, FTP, TFTP, and so on. As for data backup, well, Acronis actually comes, as you saw earlier, but you can also do, you know, Mac, OS X, Time Machine, and whatnot with this. Block level access, like, for example, iSCSI, thin provisioning, power management, volume management, multimedia support, like for example, iTunes, and you can set this up as a media server, as well as you can do cloud backups, different file systems that you can have, like for example, journaling file system, Unicode support. As well, there's all kinds of user and utility administration options, mobile applications for iOS and Android, has its own data security built right into it, so you don't have to worry about viruses and other things like a recycle bin, web disk, you can put IP cameras on this for surveillance, disk wipe and disk clone and so on. At the front, there's provision for up to five serial ATA drives and each drive bay can be locked. It has ventilation and status LEDs on the right. To open it, just pull like so and slide it out. The main part of the drive bay is steel, but they have plastic on the sides and at the front. And note, they have some rubber here for when you're installing the drive. To put it back, just slide it in and push like so. Here are the LEDs for power, WAN, LAN, USB, and status. They include a USB 3 port. Here's the power button as well as the display. And remember earlier when I mentioned four buttons, enter, escape, up, and down? Well, here they are. On each side, there's ventilation. 
And there's more ventilation at the back. And of course, this large fan is for the main unit, but this small fan is for the power supply. Here's the audio line out, HDMI port, two USB 3 ports. And remember, you've got another USB 3 port at the front for, again, a total of three USB ports. That's awesome. There's two one gigabit LAN ports. So again, you can do two gigabit LAN with this, two USB 2 ports. Here's the power switch, and here is where the power cord gets connected. And at the bottom, there's more ventilation plus four rubber feet. Now, if you wish to upgrade the memory from four gigabytes to eight, you'll first need to remove the cover. And to do so, take off three screws at the back. The cover will then slide forward and you can take it right off. Now, there's actually two memory slots. You can't see one of them because it's hidden by this module, but you can install two four gigabyte memory modules in each. Now, this unit is pretty heavy and there's no wonder it's all steel, very well constructed. Installing drives in this is really easy. First remove the drive tray, then mount the drive to the tray and slide it back in. Then of course you can choose to secure the drive. Once the drives are installed and you've made all the appropriate connections, turn the unit on and it is really easy to set up, especially if you use the setup wizard. Go ahead and run it. It will find the NAS, click on it, go next, enter the admin ID and password, which by the way is admin and admin. Make all the appropriate network configuration settings, go next. And after that, enter a new password, say okay, and then open the browser. Now we enter the username and password and then you'll need to create the RAID array by first selecting the drives. And now this is going to depend upon how many drives that you have when it comes to the different RAID array. But for me, I'm going to select RAID 0 and click Next. And then you've got a bunch of options. Choose the ones that you want, name it, and then create the array. This will take some time and once it's finished, it will confirm it. Okay, so let's go through the operating system. This is just the desktop and you could create all kinds of shortcuts here. At the top, they've got a few items for quick access. At the top left is the control panel. I'll come back to that. These are the apps and I'll come back to that as well. This is the file center for all the different folders and whatnot, different messages as well. You've got our quick resource monitor and you can choose to you know, change the language, change the password as well. You can change the display password or you could just log off. So let's go back here to the control panel. I'll go through these really quickly. So you've got the log and notification, system log, access log, log settings, and notifications. And you can choose to email notifications to you if you want. Power and hardware, you've got power management. You can set up all kinds of different power options, power schedule, wake on LAN, UPS, and hardware control, like buzzers and whatnot. Within system information, you have the system, network, service status, and hardware information. We've got a whole bunch of network settings regional option date and time you have an external drive on this if you want to or a printer within monitor you can monitor the cpu memory drive and network activity you can also choose to update the firmware and this is pretty neat you can actually check if you want to and have it you know update automatically you can also reset everything if need be. Within privilege, you've got shared folders. You've got the local account, the user group, user quota, and backup and restore, active directory, as well as lightweight directory access protocol. Within storage, these are all your storage options. For me, you know, I chose to go with RAID 0 configuration, which is not great when it comes to, you know, redundancy. And if something was to fail, I went for speed and basically capacity. But you can choose, you know, which RAID setup that you would prefer. MySCSI, ISO mount, and other options, including the disk clone and wipe. Within services, got the different file services here like Samba, 
FTP, and so on. You've got the web service. You've got the SSH service, iTunes, SNMP service, VPN service. Just go through the different options here so you can see. And the UPNP or the Universal Plug and Play. Scroll down to backup. Do the local backup. Remote backup. R Sync services. You can do a USB copy. And also you can do a system failover. Okay, so these shortcuts are already on the desktop, but you can choose to remove them or you can add some of your own. Let's just say I want to add the local account shortcut. No problem, I can do that. Or I can go ahead and remove it. Now let's go into all of the apps. All of the apps, and there's lots of them. Google Drive, for example. Let's go ahead and install that. Plex and also xbmc and note when they're installing it does give you an indication of the progress now i'm going to use plex here as an example but of course you could use xbmc or kodi if you prefer you know connect an hdmi cable right from the unit into the tv and bam you're watching your favorite movie but for server reasons i'm going to go with plex here this is a smart tv it's connected into the network it has found the plex server so once i go in there and find the content i can go ahead and play it as simple as that and now the results this is a 10 gigabyte file copied to and from the NAS. Now this is in fact pretty darn hardcore and probably not for your average home user. More intended really for small business to medium sized business. It's just an awesome unit that is very easy to use and very, very comprehensive. Overall, this is a 100% kick-ass product. Until next time, take care. Well, that's it, but I hope you enjoyed the review. And if you think this and other videos that I produce are great, please like them and subscribe to the channel. Also, your comments are very welcome. And if you have any questions, let me know.